Hi guys, welcome back to my channel and this is a video on 10 things you should know before applying to be cabin crew. Now, disclaimer, by all means, I am not saying cabin crew is a great job. Cabin crew for me was the best job I've ever done. It is so much fun, like the memories, the experiences, the places you go. Honestly guys, I can't express how much I try and push everybody to be cabin crew because I'm like, this is the time of my life. Like this legit was the time of my life. Oh God, sorry, let me just hydrate. So I felt, <coughs> losing my voice. Oh my God, I'm losing my voice. <coughs> Why now? Okay, am I back? She's back, she's back. So I felt like when I was applying for cabin crew years ago, I literally was watching every YouTube video. I was on every blog on the internet. I literally was on every website. I literally messaged people on Instagram that I knew were cabin crew. I would find people on Instagram and be like, hi, can I ask you some questions? I was that annoying person. And I know some of you are probably that annoying person as well. But there were some things that I wish I knew about cabin crew that I didn't go into it. None of these things really bothered me. I feel like other people may need to know some of these things because everybody's different. And I think going into this job, I saw so many people join and then leave very quickly because they figured out quite quickly it wasn't for them. So I just wanted to go through a few points to just say, this is some of the things that cabin crew does entail. Best job ever, I'm gonna keep saying that. But let's just, let's just address some things. Also guys, give this video a thumbs up, subscribe, drop me a comment, follow me on Instagram, let me know what you wanna see next. Right, number one, exhaustion. Guys, who feel like you're tired in your life now? You have not experienced anything. The jet lag, the exhaustion, the long days, the drives, I mean, oh my God, it's a lot. It's a lot, cabin crew. Like, going to Singapore was like 14 hour flight. And don't get me wrong, you get to sleep on board, but I'm a funny bugger. I just barely could sleep on board. I like to sleep in my bed. I really struggled sleeping on board. So some days I was writ off. And then it can ruin your trip sometimes because you're so tired. You just do not have the energy to do anything when you're down route. But some people deal with fatigue better than others. I don't deal with fatigue very well. And like the thing is they're extremely long days. Like even if you're down route, so say you're coming back from... Singapore again, let's say you've got ready in your hotel room Then your company will take you from the hotel to the flight Then you've got loads of flight checks all of that to do then you've got the flight Then you've got like getting everybody off the flight and then it's like literally You would commute home and it's like some of the days I think I'm sure that once I calculated I was awake for some that ridiculous like Nearly 24 hours. It was a joke. Dos loneliness, homesick, issues around partners. I know I got asked that before in the, the cabin Q and A's that I've done. Guys, go check out, because I have got a few cabin crew videos on my page. So go check those out. I wasn't in a relationship during my cabin crew life. So it was quite easy for me, but I knew a lot of people who were, and it was, like, some people really struggled, especially if they were cabin crew with cabin crew boyfriends or girlfriends and their schedules were just complete opposites. It's quite tough when you're not seeing your partner at all. Like some days you can be away from home for like nine days and then you're like, right, okay, I haven't seen you for nine days. So some people really struggled with that. I'm quite good with homesick. Like I went to university and stuff and I moved away from home. So for me, I never really got homesick, but there were definitely times I found it lonely. I mean, you are literally across the other side of the world in a hotel room by yourself and you're just like wow like this is quite lonely at times obviously you do have your crew and you go out with your crew and all of that but sometimes if you're not really that kind of person that wants to go out all the time you might find it quite lonely you might absolutely love the time alone i definitely loved having a lovely big bed and you know, just a hotel room to myself as well. So I personally didn't really struggle with that aspect very much, but I know some people definitely did. And I had like crew stay in my bed with me and everything because they just didn't want to be on their own. I will say if you're an introvert, you might struggle being cabin crew. Not that you couldn't do it, 
but it's definitely more of an extrovert job. You've got to be out there. You've got to be a bit wacky, really, to be honest with you. Because you could be doing things like the PIs where you've got to be speaking. You're, you know, you're front house. You're always with customers. You've got to entertain these people, feed them, all of this. You've got to be friendly. And then, obviously, you're with big personalities. Cabin crew are usually really big personalities. Not always, but usually big personalities. And when you're in a briefing room full of people or you're on a trip, you know, you've got to be out there, communicate, talk. You don't have to, I suppose, but you might struggle throughout the job if you're not that sort of person. See, I'm an extrovert and an introvert at the same time. I can be out there, I can be put in any environment and talk to people, but I also can be very recluse and just want my own time. But I can choose when I can be an extrovert and an introvert and I know a lot of people genuinely can't because they're just naturally introverted. So that might be something if you're not comfortable in front of people or very confident, you're probably going to struggle in this area of work, I'm not going to lie. Number four, anxiety. Most crew I worked with suffered with anxiety and that's because there's quite a fear monger stigma around cabin crew in the sense of the briefings. So I used to get so much anxiety. I don't know if it was just my company that I worked for, but I used to get so much anxiety going to the briefing rooms because you didn't know if you were gonna have a horrible manager. And some people used to really trick you out and like try and embarrass you and stuff in front of people and it was horrible. But every crew member I knew always had that real big anxiety leading up to the briefing room and sometimes standby could give me anxiety because i'm like oh my god where am i gonna go and then i could be like thrown in with maybe a horrible crew that you just don't know um so anxiety was definitely a thing in cabin crew 100 percent. number five i would say would be rosters so there is the good thing with certain companies like i worked for british airways and you could bid so we had like a bidding system so we could try and bid i was quite good at bidding i used to get a lot of trips that I wanted. I knew some people that bidded and just never got anything they wanted and they were always going to the same routes or always going to routes they really didn't like. And you can't really control your roster that well. I knew people that left because they just kept going to the same places and they just didn't like the routes that they were going to and they just weren't getting what they picked so they weren't getting to try new places. There is a lot of problems around rosters sometimes which can just be really annoying. Linking into rosters as number six, you're going to miss out on a lot. You miss out on a lot as cabin crew. Now don't get me wrong, when your friends are saying you're coming out the weekend and you're like, sorry I'm in Vegas, I can't. I mean, what would you rather? But when you've been to Vegas, say 20 times that year already, and you just wanna have a night out with your friends, you're like, oh. Now, you're probably watching this thinking, are you crazy? I'd rather be 20 times in Vegas, but it's 100% true. But when you constantly go away and away and away, you almost kinda lose a little bit of the excitement and that's terrible like when i think about it now i'm like oh my god i used to moan about getting three miamis in a row are you kidding me i'd much rather be in miami now than like, like here but you, you do get like that because you're away every week you're in a different country every week you don't get the excitement like you do when you first join or maybe before you joined so you miss out on a lot of things, Christmases, birthdays, weddings. But then there are also other jobs in the UK that you can miss out on. I mean, if you work in like retail and stuff like that or public service, you've got a good chance of missing out on things there too. So it's one of them, isn't it? Number seven, the commute. Some people are probably watching this going, well, I live in London, so it wouldn't be bad. That's you're right there like you know a lot of people did live closer but there are a hell of a lot of crew if not more that live further away i mean some crew used to commute from abroad i'd be like wow like that's crazy i used to commute from birmingham when i used to live in birmingham and it took me about one hour 40 drive before i used to drive i used to get so many trains tubes oh my god it was a nightmare but then when i started driving it was a one hour 40 drive but it's not that bad on the way, but on the way back when you're jet lagged, you haven't slept. Like, it is dangerous. It's really dangerous, guys. There was crew that crashed and died. Like, it's flipping dangerous. You need to be careful. So, the commute can sometimes be bad. Now, one hour 40 was nothing compared to some crew. Some crew were coming from, like, Scotland, 
Newcastle, places like that, like really flipping far. I remember the once me and my friend, we were driving back, she was driving and I was in the passenger seat. I fell asleep and then she fell asleep driving and all of a sudden we heard like the do -do -do -do, you know like those sounds on the motorway where you go too close to the edges and it goes really loud and we both were like oh. and she was like oh my god she was like i've just fell asleep and we we're like oh my god she was like we need to pull over like mm, this is not good okay number eight time management now if you're not good with time management don't apply i'm just gonna say to you don't apply because you need to be if you're on time you're late that's how it is with Crab and Crew. If you're on time, you're late. Now, that is me in life. So I'm very punctual. Like, if I'm on time, I'm late. I'm always 15, 20 minutes early wherever I go because I always like to leave early. I don't like that risk of being late. Even if I'm meeting friends or anything. Obviously, with the flights, they can't just hold a flight because you're running late. They can't do that. You've got blocks. Like, the flights are booked in like blocks. So if you're running late, even if it's like a few minutes late, that brief, so say that briefing starts at 9 a.m., you can't come in at 9 a.m. Like, you've got to be in there ready, prepared for that briefing before then. If you're a couple minutes over, it's game over. I remember the once I was supposed to be going to Amman, and stupidly, I got my um, times incorrect. Um, I left later. I thought that it was like an hour later. And I was, I literally, when I realised, I was like, Man. you cannot be late and it's the same with like if you're at the hotel being downstairs ready for pickup to go back uh, to the airport for a flight you've got to be on time i know crew that were like late and rocking up down and oh my god the pilots would go mad at you if you're not good with time management it's not the job for you i'm gonna be honest because if you miss your flight you then get put on standby but Obviously you get a bit of a telling off and stuff and probably warnings and that. Uh, you get put on standby then and then it's just a waiting game to see if you get put on another flight. So also you'd be on standby for the rest of the days if they haven't filled you in as well then. So for me, if I had say like a three day Vegas and I was late and then I was on standby for that Vegas and then I was on standby again for the next two days, I'd have to keep coming back and forth and it's just a very expensive game. Number nine is like your adaptability. Again, I suppose this is kind of linking into like the introvert, extrovert thing. Cabin crew is full of very different personalities and it can be very bitchy as well, guys. Like that's obviously a stigma around cabin crew, but it can be like that. It also links to the passengers as well. Let's not just say the cabin crew, let's say the passengers as well. You need to be an adaptable person. I'm very i'm not tooting my own horn here but i'm very adaptable like i can adapt to different people i have lots of different types of friends different ages in my life so i can adapt my conversations and how i am around them and how that makes them feel comfortable and in this job i feel like that makes it easier in cabin crew because you've got different personalities different needs and then you've got passengers who are all sorts of different type of people so if you can be like an adaptable person that would be really good. If you can't adapt and you're stuck in your ways and it's just, that's how you are, you're gonna maybe struggle because it's like, passengers will push you if, oh my God, to the limit. Oh my God, to the limit. Honestly, every button you've got, passengers will push. Every single button that push you. I've wanted to throttle a few passengers in my life. And number 10, it's not necessarily a negative, but it's kind of what you want out of cabin crew. So I would say cabin crew is a lifestyle, not a career. Now you can make it a career because you've got like your elite fleets and stuff that have done it their whole lives, but they were on a lot better pay than us guys. They were on a lot better pay than what the cabin crew nowadays were being paid. It's more of like a lifestyle. You are literally living out of a suitcase. So I never really had unpacked stuff because it was always out of the suitcase and it was always throwing things in and quickly chucking things out. I felt like I couldn't settle in life because I was always in, out, in, out, like unpredictable. If that's not your sort of style of life, if you're very like your routines it and all of that, it, it might annoy you a bit. Money wise, it's obviously not the best. It's not bad. You know, I've been paid worse, but I wouldn't say it's massively a career unless you go maybe up the ladder. But then if you're going up the ladder, you're coming out of cabin crew. You'll notice if you join the turnaround is so kind of quick. People's lifespan are usually like two to three years in cabin crew because they move on and get jobs or have families or partners or whatever. So yeah, it can be 
a bit of a bugger sometimes living out of a suitcase but i definitely found it fun for a while guys i'm not gonna lie like I know I'm sat here and I'm listing 10 things you need to know about cabin group before you apply, but it is the best job in the world. Best job ever. You know, like they say in the war films and they're in the army lads and they're always like, um, oh, what film was it? Band of Brothers or something. I love war films, by the way, guys. And like, best job ever or something. <laughs> that was like my American soldier impression. I don't know what. But yeah, best job ever. Absolutely loved it. I met some of my bestest friends there, guys, as well. I made friends for life there. But anyway, guys, that is it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know if you want any more cabin crew videos, what you want to know, what you want to see. I'm thinking about doing, like, my favourite destinations and including, like, clips photos videos let me know if you want to see that don't forget to give this video a thumbs up subscribe follow me on instagram comment i love it when i talk to you guys in the comments you know i just love the engagement i love speaking with you guys it makes me feel like we're connecting especially when i see like regular people commenting i'm like hey hey girl but yeah guys i love you so much thank you so much for watching and i hope you have a beautiful day bye guys have a beautiful time